If you're anything like me, when you think of science fiction short story writers, you probably think of Isaac Asimov, Arthur C. Clarke, Ray Bradbury, Philip K. Dick, and names like that. You probably don't think of Harlan Ellison, but you should. I always feel both thrilled and a little bit embarrassed when I discover a great writing talent, very prolific writing talent that I have missed out on over the last 20 something years. Um, I get thrilled because it's hard to find new writers who you're really enthusiastic about and who really have great talent, so it's exciting to find one. But it's also a little embarrassing because you know that there's been this person out there writing for all these years and you've been completely oblivious of them. And that's, you know, as a knowledgeable man, I like to think I know things. But I have admittedly missed out on the writing career of one Harlan Ellison registered trademark. Yes, that's right. Harlan Ellison trademarked his own name. Uh, so hopefully I won't get in trouble for doing this video, even though I'm saying that it is a registered trademark and not owned by me. Um, Harlan Ellison was an extremely prolific short story and novelist writer. He wrote over a thousand short stories. He wrote uh, dozens of novels. He died just a few months ago, or just last month in June. Um, and as is often the case, when I find someone that I've just discovered for the first time, it usually happens that they have just recently died, um, which is a shame. It's, it really is. But I picked up this collection very recently. It's called I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, which is also the name of a trope on TVTropes.com, the best website on the internet, um, which I've seen. And I guess I've been aware of Ellison's name uh, bouncing around the world, uh, but I've never read anything by him. I knew that he, he wrote an episode of Star Trek, one of the best episodes of Star Trek, called The City on the Edge of Forever. He's done tons of screenplays and television shows. He's worked on The Twilight Zone. He's worked on everything. So I was vaguely aware of his name and knew that he was a celebrated uh, short story writer and that he had Hugo Awards and all that sort of thing, but never read anything by him until I picked up this. Now, this is quite a book, I have to say. It contains seven stories, it's pretty short. It's only 150 pages. It's a nice um, collection of a lot of his works by, what is this? What, uh, this is Open Road Publications. Never heard of them, but these are nice little thin volumes, and they have like about a dozen of them of his works. Probably, I'll probably pick up a few more of them. Um, but seven stories, they're all quite dark. They're all quite sinister and grim and un uh, unpleasant in a certain way, but they also really stick with you. They, they have a way of getting inside of you and touching you in a certain way that good literature is supposed to do. And for that reason, I think they're certainly worth reading. Um, Allison seems to have been, from what I've read about him, a fairly miserable, cranky, litigious, sort of unpleasant man. Um, he seems very unhappy. He was married five times. He sued pretty much everybody. Hopefully he won't sue me because he's dead. Uh, you can't libel the dead, isn't that right? He has the craziest titles. He wrote one story called Repent Harlequin Said the TikTok Man, which is just an insane title to give anything, but it's something I want to definitely check out because I like those sort of uh, crazy long-winded titles. I think those are great. But the main thing I like about these stories is he clearly just loves words. He loves the English language. He loves obscure and interesting words, and the way he writes it for someone like me who also loves words is just very rewarding because you can just really sink your teeth into the, the sentence structure, the words he uses, the, the way he chooses to write his stories, apart from the plots, uh, they're very uh, well written in that regard. Someone who really has a love of the language, which I certainly appreciate in a writer. The plots, as I said, are dark and somewhat depressing. The title story, I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, won a Hugo Award. Uh, it is a great story. It's truly great. Uh, it's also very disturbing and will get inside of you. There's an essay in here by Harlan Ellison where he says that he considers it to be an optimistic story about the nobleness of the human spirit. I think you have to have a certain point of view to come up with that conclusion after reading it. It is a pretty bleak story, but man, he knows how to turn a phrase and he knows how to write a story that gets inside your head and sticks with you. So if you're like me, if you have not ever read anything by Harlan Ellison, but you've seen the name around and you're interested in branching out from the usual Asimov, Arthur C. Clarke, Bradbury, Philip K. Dick sort of branch of sci-fi short stories, I can very strongly recommend I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream.
the short story collection. And I'm going to go out and get some more of his stories and see what else I can find. I've been Logan Albright. You've been my audience, and I've appreciated your watching. See you next time.